Hey everybody, I'm Sean Robinson. I'm Carson Gruba. And we are Living the Line, and we've got a very exciting discussion for you today. But before we start our discussion, I just want to uh, mention a little programming note for you all uh, that uh, things might seem a little different content wise for the next, uh, you know, week or two on the channel. Uh, it's because my family is moving from uh, San Diego, California to St. Paul, Minnesota. And so we've been tearing things apart up here and uh, it has been totally occupying our time. And so, you know, things might look a little different, sound a little different. You might see my hair length jumping from uh, video to video. And uh, now you know why uh, that's been happening. So if you are a St. Paul cartoonist and uh, you want to, uh, you know, meet up for something or somebody who wants to connect me with the local scene, uh, let me know. I know the Meat House people came out uh, from that uh, that location. I don't know if people are still active there, but uh, I would love to meet some St. Paul cartoonists. Uh, so Carson, talking about busy, you and I have had a fairly exciting week, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Well, also, uh, I'm going to have glasses on and off. I just realized this is right. like the everything changes episode, e even though we have a whole bunch of pre-recorded content. Uh, and I'm going to be having some some uh, of our past guests fill in for you looking at books and stuff. It will be kind of a weird, wild two weeks. So, yeah, I had people take lasers to my eyeballs uh, a week ago now. So you got the eye snip. Yeah, and so my glasses will be coming and going, uh, and hopefully my vision will come back because currently it's everything's still pretty blurry, uh, which is a bit terrifying as an artist. So yeah, like everything changes today, but most importantly, everything has really changed. Yeah, there's some wild stuff going on, and we're going to talk a little bit about that today. So we made an announcement uh, this week. Uh, it went out through Diamond uh, Comics Distribution that we were announcing the first comic book to be completed uh, entirely illustrated by AI. Uh, and when we say illustrated, what we mean is that Carson, brave Carson, uh, <laughs> gave a text prompt to a artificial intelligence system um, called Midjourney. And every single text prompt, rather than asking it to do a specific thing, he, uh, oh, you're just giving away a lot here. You're just zipping through. Well, um, I'm, just, I'm getting into mid journey, so. Oh, okay. Can, um, you can show people what it does. Rather, rather than, um, rather than just ask it for what he wanted to see, Carson gave it text line for line text from, uh, CS Lewis's. Uh, groundbreaking, one might say seminal, uh, essay, uh, <laughs> The Abolition of Man. And uh, Carson, you, you, this is a very, very vivid text to use for a program that is essentially promising to put uh, every illustrator and painter out of work uh, yeah. forever. Um, so uh, we, we should acknowledge, uh, we, we, I mean, I, I, I first heard about this because one of our patrons, uh, Arby Tower, uh, yeah. was was emailing us about different things along these lines and uh, really got to thank RB for, you know, bringing it to our attention. Um, but uh, I mean, wh wh where did you get the, the idea for using this particular text? Uh, well, so a couple other acknowledgements. Um, RB was the first one. He sent us, our, our patron RB Tower on Patreon sent us a message and said, he was talking about Dolly 2, which is mm -hmm. the other, big AI art generator. And right. I, I think uh, probably, I don't know, I haven't, I haven't been able to get into that one, but it seems even more powerful. And then- um, Different, certainly different. Yeah, we can talk about the differences. Yeah, well, I mean, once maybe once we get a chance to use it, it would be better to wait. But then I've seen a lot of stuff on Instagram, people messing with the, the AI, but they're all talking about mid journey, which is the one that I'm using. And especially talking to our buddy, John Mahoney, me and him had been going back about, oh, this stuff's cool. Like, we need to try it out. You know, like everyone's hating on it. Like, it's going to take our jobs, like, you know, lean into it. And I had signed up just to play with it. And as, as soon as I got the invite, I sent one to you. And I was like, like, look, you know, I think I typed like, uh, I, I think I typed Masamune Shiro 
and, and just what came back was crazy. And Sean, and Sean was like, we got to make a book. And I said, hell yeah, we do. And I know exactly what, like immediately I know what to do with it. Um, and I, I think like we're in a lucky position because a, you can, you can jump on it and get it published right away. Cause we knew that this was like, I mean, there, we already, you just showed me an article on bleeding cool that someone else is now like, well, we beat them cause we put it out on Kindle. <laughs> so we knew there was going to be a battle for it, but also I feel really prepared for this because, uh, you know, we talk about comics a lot, but I had a fine art career and still have a fine art career. Um, going back 15, 20 years, this is what I talked about with my work is the philosophy of information the ethics of information. And I was always interested in um, abusing like, like, like these face morph apps and stuff like that. I was always a, I, I don't know how to program or anything. So I was always abusing them as an idiot and, and getting poor results. And I, I felt like that illuminated something about the systems right. and, and about where we're going with it. And, and all of that interest of mine, you asked like, why, why that essay, all of that interest of mine, I think stemmed from reading that essay when I was, uh, I think it's a transcript of a lecture, actually not an, a yeah. written essay, but um, I, I must've read that when I was 20 or something mm -hmm. like that. And um, just immediately understood the implications of it and rereading it for this, I thought, oh man, like, I didn't even realize how much of that has influenced everything else I've gone on to do. Like, I, I would tell you that everything else I went on to do, and we can talk about that. We're going to do an episode per issue, I think, and yeah. really dig into it. This is just announcing it. But um, I, I can talk about some of the other things that I would have pointed more as like key moments in, in yeah. forming what I think about as an artist. Right. But going back to this, that essay is like definitely one of the most formative pieces for me. Yeah. So let's step back just for a second. So we've announced as per the press release, there's going to be a four issue miniseries. This mm -hmm. first issue is essentially like a prologue uh, to it. And uh, the middle two are a near future science fiction story. And then the last one uh, is going to take the gamesmanship a little bit further and uh, do something very different with that. Um, and uh, yeah, you can see from this little preview here of the second issue uh, that uh, Carson, you're going for a very different look for it. And oh man, yeah. So, so, so the uh, second the second issue is a story that I wrote when I was 22. Um, <clears throat> that is like when people read it, and again, we'll talk more about it in another episode. But you'll see all of the core concerns that I had that that made up my artistic career. Right. in that initial story that I wrote just as a bit of fun, but I could see this stuff like lurking in my mind when I was like 22, yeah. I think is when I wrote it. So in this one, I'm um, really working with the AI to try and get it to do what I want it to do. And then taking compositional license and recoloring right. and stuff. Yeah. Uh, whereas the first issue uh, and, you know, this is good, probably going to be a complaint uh, for people who use this technology already. But um, we we just gave it. I mean, you're basically wanting to see what it does natively, uh, mm -hmm. and, and and it's funny because that's the that's people always want to take a new tool and like like do the thing that the tool is supposed to do. Like, well, why can't this do my will, right? But but there's something really intriguing about just letting the thing do the thing it wants to do, uh, in the sense of like all you literally did was give it the text of the line. Of the essay, uh, like we 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 zoom in on um, a, a single panel here. Like uh, take us maybe the maybe the uh, the one of the complete pages. Uh, well, I, I think I think the cover is a good example because yeah. I just typed the abolition of man, and that's exactly what right. it spit back. And it gives you four examples, and I just you know I, I picked picked one that seemed like I could compose around or like you could compose a cover right. around it. But one of the complaints I saw when I posted the announcement on mid journey is like, Oh my God, they don't know how to get a face. Look at all those mushy faces. And it was <laughs> like, well, yeah, like this is way cooler looking than if it was an actual face. So it's right. It, that's, that's a funny response to me. 
Well, it's 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 not just it, it's like you let it letting it do the thing that it wants to do gives you a better idea of what it actually is doing. Uh, so uh, when, 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 it's not that different than like, you know, if you see somebody who takes a charcoal drawing and gets so detailed in it that they can make it look like a pencil drawing, like there's something admirable about the perversity of it. But like if you have a piece of charcoal like doing something that has the grit of the paper and looks like charcoal is going to be the thing that's like most like the thing, you know, uh, letting the <laughs> letting the machine tell you what it's actually doing gives you a really intriguing insight. And, and I, you know, I it, it seemed like I, I, I was sort of like going back and forth uh, about like how gimmicky is this uh, until I actually went in to do some of the lettering finessing. And when I was actually reading it from the entire thing, I mean, I was deeply moved. Uh, I've held on to the feelings that I've had. You know, this is like, I don't remember if it was like 10 days ago now that I went through with the lettering. Uh, but it was an intense, it's an intense read. It's a 48 page dense, like meaningful text that has been illustrated by I mean, I, I don't know exactly what to call it, and we can sort of, you know, invoke some of the things <laughs> that we've been thinking about. But this this machine has been made to essentially make an amalgamation of different images. So, like, let's take that first panel there. The repression, oh, the repression of elements and what would otherwise be our total reaction to it is sometimes very noticeable and even painful. Something has to be overcome before we can cut up a dead man or a live animal in a dissecting room. These objects resist the movement of the mind whereby we thrust them into the world of mere nature. And if you look, both of these images are both like aesthetically beautiful um, and have a faintly like horrific, like abstraction to them um, that really gives you like insight into what's happening here with them, you know, <laughs> with the process, right? Uh, if you had just said, like, okay, what do I want to see here? I want to see a cadaver. I mean, you know, this is this is like seeding control to the machine, right? And it it it's it's it makes way better images. Like when I tell it, like a man and a woman in an elevator, right? I, I have to sit there like for an hour, like making new variations. So like in issue two where I'm like trying to take control and use it to do my story and like make it flow like a comic book, it's almost impossible. But when you just <laughs> when you just give it some poetic thing, it's perfect illustration. The only thing is they have uh, they have words that you can't use. So like I did have to like you can't put dead. So like when it says dead man, I would have had to I forget what I put, but like uh, deceased or right. Like, like there was yeah. a couple times where the machine wouldn't like because they're trying they're trying to like <laughs> i don't know it's some kind of ethical thing where like as long as we don't let it say but <laughs> dead sex like then it can't be evil but like i uh, like you can't say blood but it obviously will render blood like you can type animal in a dissecting room and it will render. so it's it's a strange set of rules um yeah and and you know i it's just the whole host of ethical considerations for something like this. I mean, are just, I just, I, I really don't want to tease them out for people who've like actually read the issue. Uh, I just want to say like, it, this is a real <laughs> compelling thing. And, you know, it's a little weird to be positioned as a, you know, a legitimate publisher who wants to put something out like in stores where people can buy it. I mean, you know, the, I get the feeling that if we had just sort of been like, this is a web comic that you can download, that this would have been like on the front page of Reddit, uh, <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, I, I, we, 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 we sort of, you know, you, you kind of kneecap, we kneecapped it a little bit by insisting that it's going to be a print publication, but really like, you know, that's, that's the quality of work. That's the thing that it deserves. It deserves to be a physical product. Um, but, uh, you know, it's, it, it is genuinely moving and, like it, it's hard for me to imagine that people are going to look at like sur the surrealist painters or something like that. Like, are you going to sit? Are people going to sit down and like have a catalog of like Magritte or something? Uh, you know, fifty years from now, if like Midjourney is flooding the world with images that are more compelling than anything that 
he put together you know yeah i mean i think that's the kind of stuff that we'll do an episode per video after sure. each issue um that will be released the day of the issue and really dig into those kind of concerns and that's that's where i think like like yeah our book's not going to be out till october so there's going to be a whole bunch more of this stuff that people can read before then because i in the in the last few days i've seen a bunch of it on instagram i saw that that one that you just sent me on bleeding cool where they like they rushed to put it out on kindle you know yeah. so we knew this was coming and like it's it, it, it like it may be a dubious claim that it's the first one like, like someone <laughs> on instagram posted one that we didn't know about or something you know but it's the first one that you'll be able to go buy yeah. as a copy of and, and as far I, as we know it was the first one that was completed uh, if that matters to you uh, what was the date? Uh, what was the actual date you sent me the InDesign package that had all the lettering in it? Um, oh God, I don't yeah. know. I know. I know. On my Instagram, I posted the date. <laughs> right. I, gener I, I generated the first attempt, attempt at the cover, but I didn't know you could control the aspect ratio. So the image I posted is like this is going to be the cover. I didn't. It was a square, and then yeah. we realized we could change the aspect ratio. So I, I generated another cover. We were going to design around the square at first. And so the whole first issue is just squares because again i didn't want to take control over it and i didn't know you i didn't know you could i like being a dummy because like you said it and, and it's not just that it, it lets the tool be the tool it's in this case the, the the claim is that the tool is intelligent so right you're expo and we'll get we should get into that yeah. more in a later video but it's exposing whatever intelligence it has um but what i am proud of is that there's going to be a boatload of this stuff and the stuff i've seen already is people like, oh, I'm gonna make a comic that looks like Moebius, or, oh, I have an idea for a story and we're gonna illustrate it. Um, Which is also interesting, yeah. Yeah, but-, but It's like, a different thing to conceptually grapple with what is this thing? What is this thing? Is it a threat? Is it friendly? Is it exciting? Is it terrifying? Does it make you sick to your stomach? Do you wanna throw up on it? Do you wanna hug it and kiss it? You know, um, you, you have hit on a conceptual conceit that gets to the heart of the, wonder and terror yeah uh, well and that's where i feel lucky because it's like it's like this is what i've been doing and you've been prepared I, for it and yeah. i've been doing this kind of stuff and never had any attention because i didn't have the venue for it i was just fucking around on facebook i was <laughs> fucking around on twitter and instagram uh we can go through in another video all of those other projects but this is the first time like because i'm always like I'm always like, oh, I, I know where everything's going and I talk about it. And then like two years later, I see it like these images are things that I was painting like yeah. four or five years ago. I was painting with stuff that looked like this. Uh, so it's so cool to finally have a venue where it's like I can talk about it. I can be at the forefront of it and I can say legitimate things about it with it. Uh, and I think that's what will be besides the fact that it's the first published one you can go get in stores. I think that's what's going to set this one apart is like um it's coming from a place of someone who spent a lot of time thinking about this and it, it, every issue even even the narrative issue really really i think is it, it's it's conceptually of a whole right. um and and even though there's like this first issue then the two issue story and then the last issue i think that they'll stand as a um you know, the, there are three separate things, but I think they'll stand as a unit yeah. too. that because like that's always the way I deal with my art is it has a, a center of gravity and then you you orbit that center of gravity and look at that from different right. viewpoints. And that's sure. that's what this is doing, too. So Wait. I'm 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 excited. and I'm super grateful for you that like now I have a venue to like actually put it out in public and not just be some guy on Twitter. Sure. Like doing what I think is something really interesting and compelling and yeah, having an impossible time to get attention. Well, well, speaking of attention, we should put a special shout out to our, our friend Paul Gravett uh, for uh, really, you know, helping us bring attention to that um, and, uh, you know, connecting us uh, with lots of people who are very interested and are having amazing conversations about it. And it was very intriguing to sort of spy on some of these conversations happening. And uh, I agree with all of you. Yeah, well, both, <laughs> if you're, both sides. If, uh, also, if you're reading Rich this, Johnson, we, we agree. <laughs> Rich Johnson at Bleeding Cool and and yeah. Diamond, because Diamond was like they understood the potential of this, and they under they understood that this was like if we don't do this tomorrow, mm -hmm. 
that you know the, the guy that bleeding cool's writing about today <laughs> right it's he, it's right so they like diamond was awesome the the bleeding cool that's been shared a ton of times on facebook okay i got a surprise for you sean uh oh this is gonna uh. be cool uh, <laughs> you, are, you are gonna like this so okay one of our subscribers someone who follows me on instagram i'm terrified Gerard, Huh? I'm terrified. No, don't tell us that. No, no. Uh, <laughs> I, I, he's he's uh, span. He's in Spain, I believe. Okay. Gerard Frisius, uh, I believe is how you pronounce his last name. Right before we jumped on, he sent me this. So this is a comic strip by a Spanish artist Paco. Uh, I clicked it. Sordo. This this was released the day. This was released two days ago, the day after we announced the book. What does the text say? Do you know? Yeah, he translated it for me. But uh, this isn't AI generated. This is someone who saw the article about our book and made a cartoon about it. <laughs> That's awesome. They, it? they saw the announcement. And so this now, then he translated <laughs> it for me. So the text is, um, oh, no, they created an artificial intelligence able to draw better than people. I'm finished. While you were talking, I prepared a 200 illustration <laughs> portfolio and sent it to publishers worldwide. I'm just receiving the first work offers. Silent, starting self reprogramming, fried chicken <laughs> turbo drawn. And uh, he's, he said there's a bunch of uh, comments, mostly from comic artists. One, uh, one of them is the current artist on Superman and the Authority. Um, <laughs> and he says one of the comments says AIs wouldn't be as intelligent if they accepted our salaries. <laughs> and someone else compared it to Rob Liefeld. Well, will, will you reach out to this guy and uh, ask him if he, he would uh, give us permission to to publish this in the back of the first uh, issue? That's that's amazing. I'll I'll, I'll, I, I'll yeah, you'll have to reach out because yeah. I don't use Twitter. Um, Baco <laughs> Sordo. But yeah, how cool is that? Like, I mean, someone immediately like made a comic about it. <laughs> yeah, I, I I misunderstood the the uh, the message on Instagram at first. I thought he was saying, "Oh, look, someone else is no. claiming that they have the first one," and I was like, right. "Nah, that came out a day later." Uh, <laughs> and then I realized, "Oh no, that's actually a hand drawn, hand handwritten one." Uh, that's beautiful. Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, what was the thing I was uh, thinking? Oh, uh, to just for the for the sake of the uh, you know historical records, such as uh, such as things are. What's the actual date that you published on uh, that you? Uh, Put on Instagram when you had the cover announcement, the day you completed the, uh, original, the interior art. <clears throat> yeah, that I started working on the yeah. interior art. Um, let me get back to my own profile. The other thing I want to do, because uh, a couple people have asked me, is just show, because not mid yeah. journeys, like you have to apply for a wait list. And so not yeah. everyone has been able to use this. Um, I posted that on June 3rd. June 3rd. So this, this book, the interior was done June 3rd. We have fiddled with the lettering. And move stuff around but that is it so here's the original image uh generated with that prompt yeah um, before i knew i could do aspect ratio so that was i announced as the cover image right um, and yeah. i might have, i might have been doing this stuff on june 2nd and talking to you about right. it and then posted it the third yeah. i don't remember but and then yeah. we we fiddled with the lettering uh like lettering position um but other than that that is the, that was a complete date so just in case anybody's curious uh, and then um, we, we had to say, I had to say too, especially um, following the comments and seeing Paul Gravett's uh, post and all the different responses to that, there's a lot of intriguing things that are out there that are also using this conceptually. Um, those are just probably going to come out at later dates because they're in progress or things like that. Uh, there's a lot of really interesting stuff happening, and uh, I, I think a lot of it uh, is going to be directly addressed in the comic. Um, I will say that I have been at what, the first few days uh, when we were when we were talking about this stuff. Um, I was mostly thinking about John Henry. Uh, I, I spent an awful lot of time uh, thinking about uh, you know the John Henry uh, American myth uh, about you know like the last of the uh, of the rock drivers you know um, and beating the steam shovel but perishing at the same time and just sort of imagining a little bit of a more future 
you know, where this is just the only way that you make images. Uh, and then I, after actually spending a little bit of time playing with Mid Journey, thanks for the invite, Carson, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Narcissus has been top of mind instead. Uh, I don't, I don't really know if I want to say anything more about that, but just those are the two touchstones that have been sort of, you know, mil those, those are my abolition of man, uh, touchstones so far. Yeah. We'll get way more into that kind of thing yeah. as we go. Cause I mean, that's like I said, that, that, I, I mean, I got a, I have a degree in philosophy from UC Berkeley, same time as I got my degree in art and I came out of there. I had well, this is something else we'll talk about, but while I was a student, I had started writing what was going to be the philosophy of information. I thought someone needed to write philosophy about the information age. And in, in doing research for that, I found that a guy named Luciano Floridi had already yeah. done, done the legwork. And I thought, thank God, okay, now I can just go <laughs> fuck around as an artist again. Um, so yeah, I mean, I have hours and hours worth of stuff to say and we'll just leave, yeah leave, leave <laughs> we'll that. spare you for now <laughs> yeah we'll we'll leave that for later but uh i do okay. want to take a look at mid journey and then uh just talk about what the the next the next two and three and four ish like so people understand the series because i do think like issue one if you think oh it's just a philosophical text and these things i don't want to buy another issue of that like it's it's the plan is that it changes yeah. so there's there, each one's like a, an experiment um so for people who are curious about what exactly this is and how it's working yeah let's take a look it's, it's pretty simple i as as much as i understand this stuff philosophically and conceptually i don't understand the technical i'm not a programmer so i yeah. don't know exactly how this works but apparently oh. it's not just mashups apparently it's an art and dolly too as well is legitimately like understands the semantic content of the words yeah, as much as, it, as, much as it does and but, is but, able but, to generate unique images it's not just image bashing uh, right well it's it's I, I i mean i think it's somewhere between the two uh in the sense that like it's working with tags um from from a bank of available of available data uh and you know tweaking the semantic content by uh, to eliminate certain common tags seems to have an immediate effect on it. So I mean, yeah, I, I think it was trained on tags, but I don't know it's going to that tag, grabbing an image that's tagged that way and then bashing them together. That's what I mean. It was a neural yeah. network, at least Dolly right. too. But my understanding of mid journey is the same thing. It's, it's been, it's a neural network that's been trained on tagged images and has developed an understanding. So what you're referring to is that if you type man, you get yes. kind of a mess. Yeah, uh, like, total like, mess. Like this Let's... is a man talking. Uh, <laughs> That's amazing. But if you, type, that amazing? if you type All like a name, your heart out. if you type a name, like uh, I typed uh, Maria and something about having a Russian accent. And I mean, it's, this is this will be uh probably the cover to issue four. Oh my god carson what are you doing to us or or this one of these two because this <laughs> is maria and and she has a russian accent so when it actually the more specific you get the better the image is well um, yeah better from a certain perspective right more specific yeah i it, mean it, it looks closer to something realistic sure um and, and and I mean, it might just be as simple as there being a more cohesive tagging of that, you know, of that name or that association or whatever. Um, or or through so many things being tagged man and woman, right. kind of like our brain, it's just it's just generating like a bathroom door abstraction. Right. It's had way too many things to average out, whereas Maria, it has less things to average out. So it's more specific. Yeah, and some of the comments I've seen um, on the press release and the example images um, noted the similarity to people who have had, you know, like uh, the certain kind of stroke uh, that can cause a certain kind of like aphasia where somebody is not able to resolve an image for themselves. Um, and uh, I, I think that there's something to that because you know, it doesn't really know necessarily what's important about, <laughs> you know, it doesn't construct a face in the way that a human being's mind constructs a face because it doesn't, you know, think that the eye.
Uh oh, we lost Sean on the internet again. No, uh, the the AI's been going after Sean's internet. Uh, <laughs> you pause there. Yeah, so there's uh, it's it, it's interesting, and I think that's part of what the book will get at is we'll yeah. let you look at the text. The first issue, at least, we'll let you look at the text, and then we'll let you look at what it did. Um, I will say, okay, issue one, like the way this works is you give it the 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 text. So I wrote a man and a woman exit and an, and an elevator. Oops, mistype. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they walk in opposite directions and then you can tell it's style prompts. So for issue two, I want it to look more like a comic book. Uh, I don't I don't want it to look like a Dave McKean ripoff, which apparently Mid Journey has just <laughs> trained on Dave McKean and or Dave McKean is just so tapped into the the, like like the, sub, the subconscious. Yeah, right. Um, but anyways, pen and ink, black and white. And then I figured out you can do the little dash dash AR and, and feed it an aspect ratio and then what it does is it gives you four options um, four compositions and you can either say no i don't like any of those and hit redo you can pick any one of them that you like and upscale it or you can say i like that composition but give me some variety so like this is an example of i'm working on issue two now trying to get it to do what i want it to do to tell the story <laughs> and um and and so i said this one looks the most like they're leaving the the elevator and w walking to opposite sides of the office so i had right. give me variations on number two and then these and then i really like the little marcel duchamp like uh you know moving legs right. new descending the staircase yeah. movement and that looked the most like an elevator so i said upscale that one and then it gives me this and it gives you a pretty big file since we're compressing them to panels. It's a pretty big file right out yeah. the gate. Um, if you pay, like I, I am on like a $30 a month subscription because the, the end yeah. like, get, just gets you so many. Um, I've burnt my money for fast work. So I'm on what's called re relax, which means I can't get the biggest images and it works slower. Uh, okay. Like for the covers, I'll put it back on fast and pay a little bit. And then I can click upscale the max and it will give me a bigger file. Um, here's an example. I had forgot to type in the pen and ink. And right. So if you don't type in pen and ink, you know, I'm trying to get a picture of a man in a cubicle. And this is the most, like, <laughs> kind of photorealistic look. I really like this yeah, one. That first one. Uh, that's the thing about this is that because of some of the subtle things that a non artist might miss, are just normal for it, like a color tone across the entire image, like the sophistication of the color balance and things like that right out the gate is like a master painter. Um, it's just all of the other things that are weird. <laughs> and the compositions are always right. fine. Like they're, uh, they're yeah. amazing. It was a, a lot of the way I was choosing images was I'm just having to look at like, okay, what does the text say? And this is where it's not meant for this yet. It like, comics comics i think you you can't make an ai write and illustrate a comic by itself yet because it doesn't understand all of the like i, I don't know it, it doesn't understand like i'm having to pick the one that best illustrates the point you know there's like right. some more decision making um especially when you get to trying to tell a story here's me trying to do it in black and white um and you can see that eh, i don't love now that i'm trying to make it do what i want like none of those the like these two are close so then i say we'll run variations on that this i like this he's standing <laughs> there like, huh. um the so then i would say like okay i really like that one so upscale that and that will be the panel so for people who are curious that's what it's doing um and and uh and and the um have you know we're gonna come back to some of this but like you know you and i were talking last night uh, when I was trying to get a specific kind of portrait image, uh, you know, I got a much more successful face by using the phrase peasant girl. Uh, and I was explaining my theory to you about this is basically people wouldn't have used the phrase peasant. I mean, when you're talking about the is history of images here, peasant girl is generally going to be a painting that was put together in like the 17th century by like a, French or you know UK or American uh, artists who made very nice faces, and yeah. so the the limitation kind of goes away when it's got a really specific set to tag on. Yeah. So you can imagine using just this technology, 
and training it in a more art specific kind of way, um, you know, you can, you could really imagine some other kinds of, you know, possibilities of variation where someone is essentially trained different ones for different uses. Well, uh, and you can, you can, um, you can <clears throat> upload, let's go, let's go just to like, yeah. since this is all ba ba <clears throat> publicly available, um, most of this stuff is happening. I'm doing it in, in my own little chat with the chat bot directs messages. Okay. But a lot of it's happening in a general forum. Public. Watch what other people are doing. Um, the amount of stuff being generated is insane. Yeah. First off, um, vintage Polaroid demon wedding. <laughs> and you can see people training it basically. Uh, you can see the results they're getting and you can see why like the power users really were frustrated by my inability to make a face look like a face because they really yeah, know how to manipulate right. it. But, but of course you, you're, that was, you know, totally beside the point. Yeah. Like that is just fantastic. I mean, this is why I say like fantasy illustrators watch out because why would you pay, you know, a thousand dollars, two thousand dollars for a book cover? when this is going to be instantly available to you. Well, I, I was mean, thinking like every heavy metal band. Yeah, that's right. They just they just type in and you go through and you realize who it's being trained on. It's Moebius, Miyazaki, Beksinski, mm -hmm. Phil Hale. Um, and, and you can go see, you know, what people want. And so our tastes are informing the AI because it's all illustrators and, and geeks, you know, sci fi right. geeks and stuff that are on this. Like this is Miyazaki, Nausicaa, Ghibli asymmetrical breath of the wind um, mild gray tones very David interesting copperfield ball getting punched by a rabbit shrek <laughs> um and so what you're talking about is like a at some point they just had tons of images and they had people tagging him now right. you can actually like i could get an image off the internet and when i type this is what you do you type imagine and then it gives you a prompt the first thing you can do is like paste a link to an image in there. Oh, wow. And that will let it know this is like, um, oh, wow. Like a resource that I want you to consider. While Holy I'm shit. Are you serious? Yeah. Like, let's what get the an fuck? Uh, I don't know. What do we give me something? Um, I mean, Dachshund. No, get, you did it in the, do, um, okay. Do do uh, let, let's let's go with this go Bogaro. Um Yeah, William Ada. Yeah. Um, let Let's do like Great. the girl, the girl with pick. the broken pitcher. Great pick. My my favorite oil painter of all time, by the way. Really, me too. I got to see a exhibit of his, um, and got to see you know maybe two hundred of his paintings in person. My God. Beautiful. I got lucky. There's a oh. museum in Stockton, California. This one's at the Detroit Institute of Art. Um, yeah, this was this was a traveling one. They they borrowed the the ones from the museum you're talking about. Uh, that big one of the nymphs. Yeah, the guys. Oh, that's a beautiful painting. I looked at that so many times. And then I went to the Hagen. So what you do is you can copy <laughs> this because that's. Oh wait, no, I need to get the actually copy copy image link. Um, and so there's a, there's like a syntax order. You put that in first. That is, I didn't know this particular, this is creepy. Okay, and then what do you want to do? Uh, uh, let's say, let's give it like a different context. Yeah. Evil, um, evil demon girls. No, <laughs> <laughs> no, um, picnic, picnic in the ruins. Girls have a picnic in the ruins. Okay. Or picnic in rocks, on rocks, near rocks. I don't know I if like ruins. ruins yeah, let's it, go it, for it, ruins. Let's see. Except you got to spell it with an R. Yeah. I can't, <laughs> type. I can't see the LASIK. It takes apparent. It, it apparently it takes a while to recover from this. Okay. Um, and then. Oh, you're gonna spell I always it. Always misspell his name. B O U G U E R E A O U. Sorry. Yeah. No, you got it. Yeah. U, not O. Um oil painting. Yeah, let's 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 try that. Realistic. Um 
dawn. How about that? Okay, sounds great. And then we want to do an aspect ratio, aspect ratio of, uh, let's make it wider, like th three to three to five. Sounds good. And it's going to take a while because I'm on the slow, but you can see all the other. So this is why I started doing it in my own direct message because I right. was having to like scroll to like find my thing and all. Yeah, you get lost. Uh, the interface, this is not, they've really, um, they, they've really gone for it using the um, Discord server. That's well, a very you can just direct message it in Discord and then it's just all yours. Right. Well, yeah. So pro, pro tip now that I've been messing with this for a while, because now mine's just going to kind of be running for a while. So while that's running, let's go ahead and yeah. talk about issue two, two and three, which will be, um, like I said, based on a story that I wrote when I was 22, as far as I remember. Um, so that will be a sci-fi story. That one I'm using the pen and ink. And I am in this one because the story had uh, color as part of it. I am altering the color, you know, yeah. just through a screen in Photoshop. And then Sean's going to write issue three. He's going to mm -hmm. pick up where I left off and give us an ending. That's right. And we promise not to talk about it uh, <laughs> beforehand. So, yeah, I'm going to ruin your thing, Carson. That's OK. Do you want to make all the art for it, too? Do you want to compose the pages and everything? That is a good question. Let's let's discuss it. Uh, okay. <laughs> I, 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 no, I, 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 yeah, we might we might we might play virtual Stan Lee here. Yeah, yeah. And for uh, for people who are wondering how I did this, I put a grid so I could determine the aspect ratio, and I sketched out ahead of time. Right. Um, instead of like thumbnails, I just sketched out panel borders and figured out the aspect ratios. Nice with gridded paper. That's yeah. the best use of graph paper I've ever seen. <laughs> and then I made my own graph and printed it out because I'm a dummy. I could have just got graph paper. <laughs> uh, and then for issue four is the most horrifying thing I've ever <laughs> encountered in my life. Um, so we had issue one is human written text, AI generated images. Uh, issue two and three is human written text and human manipulated AI yeah. generated images. For issue four, I wanted to go all the way and I found an AI, all, all the way AI, and I found an AI story generator. And then we're feeding that just like I did the C.S. Lewis thing and like just feeding the descriptions, uh, basically feeding the text of the story it gave me in and letting it do what it will. The only thing is I didn't like the, the grid look, you know, it looked right. like the six panel grid. So I'm using a random number generator. <laughs> To, to generate the uh, aspect ratios and then using my best discretion like if it's going to leave me with just like a little one inch thing i'll you know uh but like generally using a random number generator and then a lot of the times it what it was just saying that people were saying things but it right. wasn't saying what they were saying so then i would i found a random uh you know speech generator as well that sometimes the script that it generated tells me what they said and sometimes it just says they're talking and right. in that case i would like generate what they're saying um, so this is a mishmash of like four or five different algorithms out it, there that are it, it's basically an exercise in constrained writing and constrained composition and can you know and then the, the ai is doing its job and i i sent sean like a I, photo of part of the script and horrifying it is Absolute this is like horrifying. the yeah i mean just absolutely this will be the scariest <laughs> scariest uh most disgusting i don't know like i'm i'm scared to even make this issue but also uh that's what the ai wrote man so right. that's what it's gonna that's do. what we're doing and if you don't think we're committed to this exercise, just keep in mind what the cover of the first issue looks like. <laughs> we're committed to just doing doing the thing that happens, you know. Yeah, that's we're we're super excited about this. Um, Diamond was super cool. So you thank you very much. For, yeah, everybody there can, team for coming through. 
yeah i mean normally this would have been what we would have like announced it but then you would have had to wait till august to order it they've mm -hmm. already got it live where you can go to previews world yes. put a link to that and so you can order now um it's set for october 26th release yeah and uh, just in time for halloween and <laughs> very terrifying and, and uh, well, let me just say, uh, if you're interested in supporting this project, please, please, please pre-order pre it through your local comic store. Comic stores do not know that you're interested in it unless you pre-order it from them. This is a comic store only thing. This is only a thing you can get through comic stores. That doesn't mean you can't buy it online. You can just buy it through an online comic store. Escape Pod Comics, Menachem, Escape Pod, uh, Menachem, excuse me. Yeah, Menachem. Uh, sorry, I, I read your name more than I say it, Menachem. My apologies. Uh, at Escape Pod Comics has got you covered. Uh, there are other comic stores that will uh, mail it to you, but we are doing this exclusively through comic stores and exclusively through Diamond. And if you like this type of stuff, what you got to do is you got to pre-order it. And please, yeah. you know, get a few copies for people if you if you know people are uh, who would really enjoy this. And uh, we're going to put out four issues of it. And if people like this kind of sort of stunt publishing, stunt in the sense of um, you know, something that happens quickly and happens as a surprise. We're going to see if we can work out some other kinds of things along these lines, because frankly, it's very exciting to do something with a limited amount of lead time uh, and just say, oh, this is the moment to do this thing. And, uh, you know, leads you to some very interesting kinds of uh, paths and interesting connections. I've had some fantastic conversations with people over the past couple of days. I've seen some fantastic conversations that I didn't participate in because uh, I was just kind of interested in other people's responses. Uh, but, you know, we've done a lot of talking today, really, you know, buy some copies, please, if you're if you like what we're doing. Yeah, I, just, I think that's really smart, Sean, because I do suspect that there will be a lot of people maybe watching this who have never watched our videos before because just because of the AI thing, they might right. be coming to this. So if this is a, your first time on our channel. Thanks for coming here. And if you're coming in from like the AI perspective and you don't know about comics and comic shops, yeah, like the way comics work is like people only really order what they know they can sell. Some yeah. of the more like Monocom at Escape Pod Comics will order more because they believe in it um but yeah if if especially if you're not familiar with the comic scene if you want a copy you gotta let someone know yeah. um yeah because at same same for sean as a publisher and diamond as a distributor uh it's risky to make more than what you know they're gonna sell i mean you make a little bit more but yeah that's that's something i hadn't thought about uh yeah so yeah definitely definitely pre pre-order and we're we're really thrilled with all of the uh all of like the just activity already yeah. about it. Like the fact that someone's made a little comic strip about it. Yeah. So cool. and, and we, you know, I, I think it was really important to me that the, this is a troubling, it's exciting, but it's also troubling. And it's important to me that at the beginning of this thing emerging, that there'd be some kind of statement that takes into account some of the ethical considerations. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah and i i want i mean i know it's inherently a gimmick and people are talking have been talking about it like oh gimmick 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 um i promise you this is stuff i care about very very deeply and have been working on for 20 years of my life writing about thinking about making art about it it there is inherent gimmick aspect to it yeah, sure but i promise you that I well, am coming at this from a very serious standpoint, and um, I don't think it will read or land like something that's just doing this because it's possible. No, I, I, and I think another word for for gimmick is a hook that you haven't you know you haven't sort of uncovered the bait yet, or haven't uncovered the rest of the hook yet. You know, like um, yeah, I, I'm I'm very happy about this. I'm very pleased to you know be able to publish it, and it's. Oh. It, you know, I'm excited. So here's our rough uh, Borgaro, right? Yeah, there's and you can see how it definitely used uh, that input that I gave it. Right. Now, it's it already probably knows Borgaro because he's a very famous painter and it, it might have been able to do that without the prompt, but you can give it image prompts as well. So it is being trained on a lot of famous illustrators, Yeah, uh, which is sad. We'll get into that later. Um, 
but yeah, I don't know. That's enough. Go order the book. Yeah. We're we're super happy about it. It's yeah. it's going to be awesome. Let us know what you guys are uh, doing and thinking, and uh, you know if you have some uh, projects of your own uh, that are along these lines or things. You know, if you hate the entire thing and you want to uh, have a place to vent, this is a good place for it. So let us know in the comments. And uh, thanks for watching, guys. Take care. Make sure to like, smash that subscribe button, and ring that bell.